Hello, everyone, and welcome to Getting Started with Autodesk Docs webinar. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at Microcat. And today's presenter is Julian Niño. Projects right away and how to navigate your account as well as your project. And that is definitely worth 30 minutes of your time. Um, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask Julian to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our social media and website. Um, also, make sure to be checking our YouTube channel. Um, we post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or watch it on your own time. And without further ado, we'll pass it on to Julian. Thank you, Juliana, for the wonderful introduction. Um, so let me go ahead and start sharing my screen. And if you Please let me know if you can see it. Yes, we can yes. see it. Awesome. So as Helena just mentioned, uh, today we wanted to bring you up uh, Autodesk Docs and getting started with Autodesk Docs. And as you might be or may not uh, familiar with Autodesk Docs, is this kind of hidden gem within the AEC collection and as well as this standalone product from Autodesk. So for those users who are not familiar with Docs, it's a cloud-based environment for managing your documents and sharing data that is going to allow uh, for you and your team co to collaborate and organize all your project information uh, easily. So this tool uh, definitely improves collaboration within your team and is going to be enabling your users uh, to work in different and important ways when it comes to connecting your teams all across the ACC or out of this construction cloud platform uh, from different products such as Docs, Build, Takeoffs, and Bing Collaborate Pro. So this is going to be enabling you to transfer the information from design to, con to construction uh, you are going to be able to use spreadsheets, your drawings, uh, all the information uh, is basically going to come in uh, with your folder structure and is going to give you this sweet uh, permission form that is going to allow you to reduce manual efforts when it comes to sharing and um, documenting your projects. So you can document and communicate, uh, collaborate with a uh, simple uh, set of markup tools. And as well, you can use this across the data environment from Autodesk products, such as uh, Revit, AutoCAD, Civil. You're going to see a lot of use when it comes to using Docs and all the tools that comes with the construction cloud platform. So if we are getting started, um, Probably a lot of you have already used it, but for those of you who have not used it, you are going to ask, well, where is it, right? So if you're familiar with Autodesk products and you already have, let's say, an AC collection or you're just purchasing Autodesk docs, so you can go to your managed account and go within your architecture, engineering, construction collection, select your view items, and within that uh, products and service uh, platform, you're going to see that Docs is available, right? If you uh, single purchase just Docs, you're going to see it right there just in your account, and you're going to be able to just access now. This is quite common with new users of the uh, managed platform. Um, the first time when you select it, uh, it's going to take you to this side right here. So basically, you can select the destination of your Autodesk uh, Docs products, right? So um, when, it when the time comes to using Autodesk Docs, it is recommended to use the unified projects. Um, and this section right here is going to take you either to your Docs, Build, or Beam Collaborate. But if you already have been using Beam 360, you either can use the Beam 360 US or the Beam 360 EU. And last, 
just like that, you're going to get started with your Autodesk Docs, right? So the first thing that you're going to see is, well, it's just going to send you to the account navigation. And the first thing that is going to happen is either if you access to the acc.autodesk.com, you're going to get um, the screen, uh, the screenshot for your for your projects, right? And this is going to be appearing on your web browser. Right away, you are going to get to your project list. If you or your team has already been invited to be part of a, a new team or an existing team, you're going to notice the project names, right? But if it's your first account, you're going to notice that the project name is just going to be a sample project. So the first thing, as I just mentioned, you're going to see your project list. And below that, you're going to see the project name and the date that was uh, created on, right? And in addition to that, you're going to notice a nice search bar where you can look for your projects, either if they are your projects or if they are third party projects from another companies who has invited you to be part of them. Then to access your account administration, uh, you can log in into a specific project or uh, when you log into that project, just make sure that you are under the correct product. In this case, I can highlight in right there the, the build and uh, for another users that maybe has um, use or try a trial version for different products such as bill or design collaboration, just make sure that you are under docs. So right there, select the correct product, in this case docs, and select the correct project as well. So when it comes to basic product navigation, you're going to notice a couple of features right there. Uh, and these are going to be your, uh, your tools. So within the site navigation for your project, it's going to include the files, right? It's going to include the reviews. It's going to include uh, an option to creating transmittals, as well as tracking and creating issues within your project. And along of all these tools, you are also going to have the option to have reports and managing members. And sometimes you are going to get kind of overwhelmed with all these tabs right here, uh, looking at your screen and uh, not being able to uh, see like the clear picture of all your folders, right? You're going to notice at the bottom left of your screen an option to uh, minimize the site tab and as well you're going to notice within the project navigation on the top right of the screen this little check mark right here question mark that is going to allow you to go to the help uh, option from Autodesk Docs which includes a lot of helpful articles when it comes to using the tools as well as a learning center or you can as well contact support from Autodesk directly. So this is a really nice feature that it is included with uh, Autodesk uh, Docs and as well all the other cloud platform uh, products from Autodesk. So you're going to say, okay, I created my account, I have a pro uh, project, right? And right away I just jump in into the project, but I don't know how to manage either my account or how to manage my projects, right? So it's a pretty simple thing um, when it comes to the account administration, right? So a lot of companies are going to have this option to either admin their own portals or be part of another company to admin more projects, right? So you can admin projects uh, from locations all over the world, right? Or you can uh, be part of just one company with different teams and you want to admin your users, your projects, and sometimes uh, it's important to have this central place where you can manage all the information as well as your teams. And you can see as well that you are going to have the option to either create the projects, uh, manage your members, but the most important is usually if you are just an account admin, 
uh, for your company, you are going to have account admins for um, your teams or your projects, right? So jumping right into the account administration, the first thing that you are going to notice is that to become an admin, uh, they can be either three options to be an admin, right? So the first one could be is that you have started a trial, right? Either for Bill, Takeoff, Bing Collaborate Pro, or Docs, and you can start your trial for free. What is going to happen is when you start your trial, either you're going to uh, need to request your free trial to Autodesk, or it's going to ask you to create an Autodesk account, right? So that thing is important when you start uh, creating your, your projects and managing your account on uh, Autodesk Docs. In addition to that, the first page that um, we access in, right, the acc.autodesk.com is going to take you right here to the project list. And you can see this is going to be the first screen that you see. You're going to notice just a single sample project, but as well, it's going to allow you to go right there to the account administration. So when it comes to going to your account administration, you are going to be able to manage all the information for your company, right? And alongside that information is going to allow you to either create more projects, modify and managing your members, define settings and define templates as well. So. After you select account administration on the top left, you are going to see the options for your product list. And within that, you can see the account administration. The second option is that you can receive an email from an existing account. So that second option is going to send you an email and it's going to tell that someone else has added you as an account admin right there pretty much the only thing that you just need to do is go ahead and click that get started button. And the third option could be is that you're already working with uh, an Autodesk uh, sales team, right? Or you are working uh, with us, a reseller uh, such as Microcat, and we can help you set up your account. And in that case, we are going to uh, be allowing you to define the name of your, your company and as well uh, letting us know who should be the account admin and we can start to manage and create your, um, your projects as well as to plan your products and accounts. So with this third provision as the account admin, you as well are going to get the email invite. From there, once we are uh, working within the account administration, you're going to notice on the top left, the options um, that are part of the account administration. So on the top left, you're going to see what I already mentioned, projects, members, and templates. But to the right, you're going to notice the different accounts that you can be part of. So you're going to see uh, two different set of uh, accounts that I have right here on my screen. And this is also going to change on your account. Let's say that you have been invited for, from multiple accounts to have access to their projects. So right here, you are going to be able to see and change uh, between accounts. And on the bottom part of your screen, you are going to be able to see and manage and change your projects as well. In addition to account administration, uh, you must remember this, only account administrators can create projects. So this is really important but because most of the time we start setting up all our users, uh, allowing them uh, to access the project and they are going to tell you, hey, I cannot create projects. And this is really important because only the account administrator can create the project. And from there, let's say that you are uh, a really busy person and you are the account admin for your company, right here is where you can start adding uh, secondary admins. And those are the ones that can start managing the account, creating the projects for the users, or maybe different set of teams 
where they can create the projects and managing the users. As simple as that, from the account admin, you can create your project and we are going to need to fill up uh, some basic information. Uh, one of the fields that are required uh, for us to create a project are the ones that had a small highlight asterisk on the top right. And one of those is going to be the project name. The second one is the account. So if you remember what I just told you, you can be part of different accounts. So make sure when you are creating your project, it is located on the correct account, right? The next one is going to ask us for a project type. And before finishing creating our project, I will recommend to fill up the project number as well. Every time that you look for a project uh, within Autodesk Docs, is going to be on an alphanumerical uh, value. So it's going to be easy for you to locate your project. So let's say you want to start from 001 up to 100. So it's going to be easier for you to locate your projects. So just a slight recommendation, go ahead and uh, fill up the project number as well. You can later define all the other uh, values for your project creation. And just like that, after you fill up these three that are required, go ahead and create your project. After you create your project, and this is important for those admin only, is that you are going to um, be sent to the members tab within the project. And within the members tab, you're going to notice that usually if your job is only to go ahead and create the project, just make sure that either you add an additional admin or a member for the company that can start to define the folder structure and invite other members. But you're going to see that right away an account admin is going to have access level to all the projects and you can see it right here on the right side of your screen. And as well, you're going to see on this tab to the right that you have the option to turn on or off the products that you have currently with Autodesk. So right now we are just talking about docs, but let's say that your company also has a build or a cost or being Collaborate Pro, from here you can turn on or off the products for this project. And now, as I just mentioned, usually if you are just the account admin that manage the Autodesk products for your companies, you may want to add a member and to that member add additional permissions, right? So in this case, that will be the project member or the project administrator. So this part is important because the project administrator can later set up all the information for that project and as well uh, can select the products uh, that needs to be used by, by that user. So in this case, we can select him as a project administrator and then as well turn on the products that uh, he needs to access to. Uh, the last part will be just go ahead and click that invite button. Once we are done with all this part to creating uh, the project, adding the project uh, administrator, you can navigate once again back to the account admin. And this is also an important part because when it comes to adding the members, you need to make sure that uh, you can also assign the licenses from here. So if you're familiar with the manage account from out of this docs is that for your users, you, co you can go to the account administration uh, tab, select the current user selected, and at the level of subscription, you can assign the save for a product. So in that case, you can go ahead and select the docs license for that user and as well uh, give him additional access level. So this is important because this is a uh, commonly asked uh, and frequently asked questions is that if I have a docs uh, seat and, and I create my project, but I need someone else to have access to that project, 
that user is going to need to have his own out of the stock seat, or if you have a seat available, you can share one of yours with that user. So this is far, fairly important. And this is going to happen a lot uh, uh, frequently. If you start adding your members, but your members have not been assigned a product or access level, you're going to notice, uh, as is shown right here on the screen, uh, the status for that user. So probably it's going to show not invited. So just go ahead and make sure that your user has the access level, either as an executive or an admin, then invited to a project. And right there, if you want to share one of your seats, because it's part of your company, you can go ahead and, and do that. Or you can let that user know that they are going to need their seat to access the project. Then after we are done with the account admin is the time where we start taking a look of the project administration. So for your project admin, as you can see right there, you're going to be able to navigate to the project admin. Once again, just remember, make sure that you are on the correct product. In this case, either it's going to be docs or the product that you have available and on the correct project. So in this case, you're going to notice the same. From here, you are going to be able to assign members and most important, assign the permissions. So from right there, you have the different uh, product access options, right? So let's say on your project, maybe you have uh, subcontractors who have access to bill and the general contractor who has access to cost manager cost management, right? So what is important to understand uh, with this is that uh, not all the projects needs to have access to the same uh, information within your project. So make sure that they have the correct product assigned and they are assigned on the correct uh, team. So that's important because when we select the project admin, you can see right there the option between docs or build, right? And these different type of um, users are going to have different type of product access. Once we uh, have all that information defined, you can pretty much uh, start adding members. And what is really nice about out of this is that you can copy and paste all your users at once. And you can as well go ahead and type in, change it, and adding just separating them with a comma. And most important is that you can define right away the information if there is construction or given the option to be project admin or project members. Now, when it comes to reviewing and managing the members and permissions, you just need to jump right ahead into your files, right? And this is going to change depending on your uh, product, if either it's docs or uh, build. You can go ahead, just make sure that you're on the correct project. You're on the correct product. And we can go to files. When it comes to files, you're going to notice the three dots next to each subfolder. So when it comes to those three dots, those are the ones that are going to give us the options for each folder. And from there, we can define the permissions, right? So these permissions are important for us and for our users. This one as well is one of the frequently asked questions. I just add a member and my member cannot see the product. What is, go what is going on? He cannot see the folders. He cannot see the files. So you can go ahead and define those permissions for those, those users. So right here on the screen, you can see that we have different users con different, uh, with different permissions, right? So for some users, maybe they are just project users. Maybe though uh, there's another that are project administrators, right? And uh, depending on that user, and maybe let's say depending on that team or that company, they are only going to have uh, different permissions such as just view the document, maybe just manage the, the account. And that is going to be mainly for the project admins, right? 
and maybe you have uh, some users with more uh, uh, permissions, right? So they can edit and upload and some users that are going to be limited on the information. So when it comes to changing uh, those permissions, you can just go ahead and hover one user and you're going to see a drop down menu and with it that drop down menu you're going to see the available options for the permissions for those users so this is quite important for you to understand when it comes to managing your projects and managing your members because you can be uh, stuck for a couple of minutes trying to figure out hey i just purchased a license i have my user ready to work i have my files but they cannot see it, what is going on. So right here, the managing permissions and reviewing each member to assign the correct permission. So don't forget this one. This one as well took me a while, a while to figure it out. And now let me just go ahead as we are getting started, we are going to jump ahead to the, uh, to the browser to one of our projects, create a folder and upload a file. I believe to get started on your pro project, this will be the easiest way to learn, right? So right here we have one of our projects. This is uh, just a project, it's called Docs Demo, right? You can see on the top left that I am on my docs, right? As well, you can see highlighted in blue that I am on files and you can notice as well if I change the tab, it's going to be highlighted on the on the tool and setting that I'm selecting. So maybe one day I just load up the screen and I cannot see my files. It may be because I'm on the issues tab. So make sure you're on your files. As I mentioned, if you see that it's too crowded, maybe you are one of those users that like to have like a really zoom screen and you cannot uh, work unless it's like this. Right here on the left side, you have the collapse option, right? And right here, we are going to start uh, creating a subfolder. So most of the time, you are going to get just this for the fill and project fills. And you're going to notice the three dots. The three dots are really important because those ones are the ones that are going to give us the options for each subfolder. So in this case, we are going to create a subfolder and right here, I'm going to call it uh, webinar. And you're going to notice how on my workspace, it just changed uh, and the webinar folder just appeared. So right here, we have different options to upload our files. So one of those is right here on the top left and it's upload files. And the other one is right here, upload file. This is fairly important for you to understand. If you are on your web browser using Autodesk Docs, you need to understand that right here it says files. So Autodesk Docs allow us to upload files. If you want to upload a folder, I can show you in a minute how to do that. But right here, upload files, let me just go ahead and select it from my computer. I have something on my desktop already prepared. Right here, you can see upload to webinar and I'm going to upload a picture. So right there, you're going to notice it's going to take some time. It's going to be processing. And once it has been processed, it's going to give me the check mark that is done and I can click here done as well. So right there, you notice a couple of notifications, make sure that it's working and it's done. If I want to see it online, you can click right there on the Autodesk Viewer and it's going to take you to the picture that we just uploaded. So just make sure that you're uploading files and this is not going to happen to you. The second option is that we can drag and drop to our screen. So let me uh, go ahead and minimize my screen. And right here. Let's say I want to upload a DWG file, dragging and dropping. And just like that, you can see how it start uploading, processing. This is going to take a little bit of more time to upload, but you get the point, right? 
you have different options to upload your files. And once I'm done, just click done, and you can verify it as well that uh, your file has been uploaded. And in this case, I just uploaded a DWG. You can see it right there on your Autodesk Docs viewer. Last thing that I just mentioned, you want to upload a folder, right? So if you want to upload a complete folder to your Autodesk Docs, you are going to be using something that is named the desktop connector. Right here on the bottom right of my screen, you can see it is a gray D. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to separate these two folders. And on the left side, I'm going to select my desktop. And on my desktop, I'm going to have this upload to webinar folder, right? And on the right side, I'm going to go and navigate right here on the left of my desktop or my Windows Explorer, I'm going to go to Autodesk Docs. And within Autodesk Docs, you can see the different uh, projects that you are part of, right? So in this case, I have my company and I just started a trial to uh, show you a different option, right? So I'm going to go to my company and within my company, you're going to see the different projects, right? In this case, I have my docs demo project. So you're going to see the following. So let me move this uh, folder right here for a moment. Let me minimize that, right? And on the right side, on my desktop connector, this is going to be an image from my project. So on the left side, you can see the project files, as well as right here on my right, you have the for the fill, and you have the for the fill. So when it comes to the desktop connector, this is a really nice place where you can upload your folders. So right here, I just uh, went ahead and select the project files and you will have the option to upload that folder, right? So in this case, you can just select it and drag it and it's going to be uploading to uh, your, your project. So right there, you're going to notice the transferring files option right here from the desktop connector. And once I minimize that, you're going to notice right here on the left side, let me bring this once again, make sure it's a little bit bigger. You just see the folder upload to webinar and it's going to include the three files that I have on that folder. So you can see it, it's just the same that I have right here is going to uh, give you additional information of when I upload those files and you can go ahead and verify that these are the files that you just upload. So just remember that this is another frequently asked question. Why I cannot upload files and the option to upload files is within the browser. If you want to upload a complete folder, you can do it from your desktop connector. All right, going back to our presentation. And I just wanted to get you started with docs. So that was it from me. So I hope you have enjoyed this, this small talk. And if you have questions, go ahead. Thank you, Huli, for that wonderful presentation. And as he just mentioned, you can make a question on the left-hand corner. Um, one question we have is, what is the difference between project admin and account admin? Alrighty, that, that is uh, really important. The main difference between the project admin is that a project admin is only going to be available to manage the project, right? is going to be available to add members to the project, to add and remove permissions to the users. Where an account admin is the one that is going to be able to create projects, add members to a company, right? Or to an account. And as well, is going to be able to assign seats or remove seats, as well as to remove users from that account or from a specific project. While the project admin can only do it on the project level. 
Got it. Thank you. Um, next question is, where do I create a new project? Lee, I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Oh, um, yeah, I can hear you now. There we go. So um, you can create your project from the first screen that I mentioned. You can go to acc.autodesk.com, right? And it's going to take you to this site right here. You can create a new project from the uh, home screen which is acc.autodesk.com uh, slash .autodesk projects. You can create a new project from there. And as well, you can create a new project from your account administration. So from right here, you can create a new project. And just remember, make sure you are on the correct account and on the correct product. So right here, the, make sure you are on the account admin. So for this sample project that I have right here, you can see that, okay, I just can go ahead and create my new project. Got it, thank you, Juli. And last question is, where can I add or remove members? Alrighty, so to add or remove your members, you can go right here to the top left on your account admin and select the members tab. I'm going to expand this thing right here so you can see it more clearly. Account admin, members, and from here, adding a member. So in this case, I'm the only one on this one, but let me take you right here to a different account. And let's look for my docs demo project. And in this case, let's say I want to remove someone that I just added yesterday. So right here, you can see three dots and remove member. As simple as that. And as well, if you want to add a new member, you just need to go ahead and click the option to add member. So let's go back and at uh, once again, Maria. And you can see, well, right here it says already it's in the project, but you get the point. From right here, you can type in the email, just make sure that you select the role and the access level. You got it, that seems easy enough. Thank you so yes, much, Juan. Um, and if you want to learn these topics in detail, you can always take a custom training with Julian or someone else on our team. We also offer group classes online. Um, so be sure to be checking the MicroCAD website for future webinars. And that concluded our webinar today. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you, Julian. That was great. Thank you everyone. Oh, have a nice day. Sorry, we have another question right here that I... Yep. I catched in time before we end. Okay. What kind of files can be added to a project? Oh, that is a great question. And right here, let me, that is easy to answer and easy to look as well on Google. This is important. Um, out of this docs, file formats. So this is this is a quite frequently asked question that we receive. Oh, let me take this one. This one, yeah. So the supported files. So you're going to notice that out of this docs is going to allow you to upload a lot of different uh, file types, right? And with those, you have a different set of files from different set of softwares. And what is important to know is that as you can upload many types and many different set of files, your viewer is only going to recognize or allow to use the supported formats from Autodesk 
or simple formats such as PDF uh, and Office files, right? So for example, right here on my project, let me go to Docs, and you can see that on my viewer, um, on the files that I just upload, I have a, a JPEG, right? Or a JPG file, which is an image. I can see it on my viewer, right? I uploaded a DWG, I uploaded a PDF. If I have a Revit file, right? If I upload a Revit file, you are going to be able to see it on your viewer. If you upload a Navis work file, you're going to be able to see it on your viewer. Same thing is going to apply for InfraWorks, Civil 3D. But let's say that we upload uh, another 3D file from another company. That one is not going to be able to see on the viewer. However, is going to be a store on your Autodesk docs. So uh, this site right here, if you cannot uh, see it on Google, you can as well uh, do it from right here. Let me show you this trick. And if you remember from what I showed you on the screen, you can go right here to the top right next to your username and click on help. And when you go on help right here, just type supported files. So it's going to take you to all the knowledge source, knowledge source information. And from there, you're going to get the same article that I look right there on Google. So it's just a slight shortcut that you can use as well if you are on your Revit. And you have supported files and unsupported files. So that is really important before starting to upload files. Maybe take a look of this. Let's say you are uploading a file and you are not seeing it. Probably is because uh, one of these files right here. If you want to upload it and just have it right there, a uh, useful tip that I found is you can zip these files, upload them, and then if you want to share them, the other users can download it on their computers, right? But if you just upload it as simple as that, for example, this extension right here, if you upload that file, they are not going to be able to see it. Go ahead and zip it, uh, either with or do a .rar file, upload it, then can, they can download it. Got it. Thank you, Juli. OK, and that really concluded our webinar. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending, and have a great day. Thank you, Juli. Thank you.